Hello dear students, welcome to mathematics class. In this class, let us discuss some important theorems on subgroup. So here, the statement of the theorem is, let H be a non-empty subset of a group G, then H is a subgroup of G if and only if AB inverse belongs to H. AB inverse belongs to H for all A comma B belongs to H. So here in this theorem it is given that G is a group, G is a group means that is satisfying all the four laws, they are closure law, associative law, identity law and inverse law and H is a subset of G, it is a subset means all the elements of H belongs to the group G and we need to show that H is a subgroup of G if and only if this condition satisfied that is AB inverse belongs to H. So, here it is if and only if condition then we need to prove this theorem in both the ways first by considering H as a subgroup we need to satisfy this result and in the converse part we need to consider this one that is AB inverse then we need to prove that H is a subgroup. So, to prove that H is a subgroup we must prove that H itself is a group for that again same that H must satisfy the four laws, they are closure law, associative law, identity law and inverse law. Now let us prove this one. So it is the first part. Now let G is a group. So it is given. Next let H be a, let H be a subgroup of G. So, here given that G is a group and now consider H as a subgroup of G. If H is a subgroup then it implies that H itself is a group. H itself is a group means all the four laws satisfied for H, right? Now, let us consider the two elements that A comma B belongs to H. And now, now B belongs to H, it implies that B inverse belongs to H. So, it is by using inverse law. Since H itself a group, and it is given that is a non empty. So, therefore, we have considered A and B in H. Now, B belongs to H, it implies B inverse also belongs to H because that H is already a group. So, therefore, that has to satisfy the inverse property. Hence, inverse of B must be in H. So, therefore, B inverse belongs to H. And now, now A belongs to H and B inverse belongs to H. So, here we have two elements A and B inverse then I can write that A B inverse belongs to H. So, this is by using closure law. So, by using the closure property we can say that for all A comma B belongs to H that is the statement. What is the statement? For all a comma B belongs to G, it implies A star B belongs to G, right. So, it is the statement of the closure law. So, by using this closure law, here we have written that A belongs to H, B inverse belongs to H, it implies that A B inverse belongs to H. So, here multiplication is the binary operation because in general the star is nothing but we can use that multiplication directly. So, therefore, now here we have considered that H is a subgroup of G and finally we have proved AB inverse belongs to H. So, therefore, 
whenever h is a subgroup of g then this condition must satisfy so it is the first part then conversely conversely so in converse part first result means the result in the first part will be the given thing and we need to prove h is a subgroup of g now let let a b inverse belongs to h for all a comma b belongs to h so consider this as the given to prove that to prove that h is a subgroup of g this we need to prove so here given that for all a comma b belongs to h ab inverse belongs to h that is the first result in the first part that is ab inverse belongs to h to prove h is a subgroup so to prove h is a subgroup we need to prove that h itself a group means h independently satisfies all the four laws now let us verify one by one now so first one as h is non empty as h is non empty it implies that a belongs to h non empty means at least one element should be present in the given set so therefore a belongs to h now now we can consider a comma a belongs to h means whenever we are representing a set we can repeat the element any time the same element can be repeated any time or we can write that once right so therefore here we are using the same element twice so it implies that it implies that a a inverse belongs to h so here here there are two elements a and a then it implies a a inverse belongs to h so this is by given what is given here ab inverse belongs to h, h for all a comma b belongs to h means we should take the inverse of the second element so therefore here a is the first element and this a is the second element so therefore we can write that as a a inverse by using this condition that is ab inverse so here a a inverse means that is nothing but the identity element belongs to h right so therefore here a a inverse belongs to h means that a a inverse is nothing but the identity element so therefore therefore identity law satisfied therefore identity law satisfied here a into a inverse that is nothing but the identity element so therefore if identity element exist in the given set then we can say that identity law satisfied for that next second one so here let a belongs to h right and in the previous step we know that e belongs to h right so therefore we can write this one as e comma a belongs to h a is there in h because that is non empty and also we come to know that e belongs to h because in the step 1 here 
we have proved that E belongs to H. So, since A and E are the two elements, then we can write this as E comma A belongs to H. Again by the given condition, we can write that E into A inverse belongs to H, it is also by given. What is given here? A B inverse belongs to H for all A comma B belongs to H. The first element and the second element we need to consider the inverse of the second element. So, therefore, inverse of the second element is A inverse then E into A inverse equal to what? A inverse belongs to H. So, if A belongs to H and A inverse belongs to H then we can say that inverse law inverse law satisfied. The element and its inverse if both are there in the same set then we can say that inverse law satisfied for that set. Then third one third one let a comma b belongs to h let us consider the two elements in H A and B. Then now here B belongs to H it implies that B inverse belongs to H because here we have proved inverse law satisfied means for all the elements of H there exists an inverse. So therefore if B belongs to H it implies that B inverse also belongs to H and now now A comma B inverse belongs to H. These are the two elements. Then A into B inverse whole inverse belongs to H. This is also by the given condition. The given condition is for all A B belongs to H, A B inverse belongs to H. So, already the second element is B inverse. We need to take the inverse of that that is B inverse whole inverse. And inverse of inverse is nothing but the element itself. So, therefore, its result is B, it belongs to H. Now, it implies that A comma B belongs to H, it implies that A B belongs to H. It is nothing but the statement of the closure law. Hence, closure law satisfied. Now, we have proved the three laws one is identity law then inverse law and finally the closure law only one property is remaining that is associative law and let us prove that one that is the fourth one now ab into c is equal to a into bc for all elements abc belongs to g right because G is a group it is given if G is a group then associative property must hold in G. So, here since H is a subset of G since H is a subset of G because it is given H is a non empty subset of G is given. So, therefore, G is a group and H is a non empty subset of G. Now, therefore, we can write A B into C is equal to A into B C for all A B C belongs to H. So, here H is a subset of G means all the elements of H must belong to G. Already G is following the associative property. So, therefore, all the elements of H has to follow the associative property. So, therefore, it implies that H is associative. H is associative under the given binary operation. Now, here we have proved that therefore, H itself a group H itself a group because here first one is identity law satisfied 
in the converse part so it is the first one that is identity law satisfied then here inverse law satisfied closer law satisfied associative law also satisfied so therefore all the four laws satisfied therefore h itself a group hence hence h is a subgroup of hence h is a subgroup of g so therefore it is the theorem so here in this statement h is a non empty subset of a group g then h is a subgroup of g if and only if ab inverse belongs to h so since it is if and only if condition we need to prove the theorem in both the ways now first we have considered that h is a subgroup of g and we have proved ab inverse belongs to h so therefore it is the result for the first part and in the converse part we need to consider this result as the given data so therefore ab inverse belongs to h for all ab belongs to h so it is given and to prove h is a subgroup of g to prove h is a subgroup of g we need to show that all the four laws satisfied for h so in that condition we have satisfied the identity law hence inverse law closer law and associative so therefore h is a group hence it is a subgroup of g